What's up guys, this is Adam from Properly Wound and today we have a pretty unique piece. Um, if you guys have been following our channel for a while, we've reviewed a Stova Flieger 40mm automatic already. Um, and I believe the topic of that video was do you need a Flieger? So we're not going to completely address that question since it's already been answered, but I'm going to give you guys a couple quick specs and my thoughts on the Laco Munster a dial, of course, the A dial <clears throat> designated that way because of this A type large dial. There's also the B dial, which has an inner ring that has the hours with the minute hands on the outside. Um, so that's what, if you guys just um, Google A dial versus B dial on Google Images, I'm sure it'll be the first one to come up. So before we get to this watch really quickly, I'm just going to talk about this packaging really quickly that I really enjoy. Laco has this sort of long, um, display style zipper box um, and the watch just sort of comes laid out right in the middle there. You've got your little receipt at the top. Um, what I really like about this is it sort of <clears throat> it sort of contributes to the feel of this being sort of a classic flieger. You almost have this this buffalo grain style leather um, that is very true to the um, the straps that were used back in World War II which we'll get to in a minute. Um, you got the little Laco 1925 on there, so very cool. Um, props to Laco for not just doing a generic box with a cushion um, that the watch sits on. So, anyways, to the watch itself. So, like I said, this is the 42 millimeter Laco Monster dial, um, Monster A dial. Sorry. Um, we'll get some quick specs out of the way, and then we'll sort of talk about the watch itself and and uh, what my thoughts are on it. So it's a 42 millimeter watch um, and the originals were 55 millimeters so which is pretty unwearable. <laughs> um, not pretty unwearable, absolutely unwearable these days. So it's nice that they shrunk it down to make it um, a manageable size but it still has some presence on the wrist be and it has that presence on the wrist because there's essentially no bezel so that dial is really really wide and expansive so it looks pretty big. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist you guys can see um, it actually has quite a bit of presence keep in mind that the watch is a lot closer to the camera and my camera is really close to my hand so it does appear a little bit larger than it actually wears in person um, these lugs by no means overhang my um, my wrist but it might kind of look like they do there anyways so one of the really cool things about this is it actually has the thermally blued hands, like a lot of great um, higher-end fleegers do, like the Stova. Um, really like the diamond crown over the onion crown, too. Kind of reminds me of the Big Pilot, and I really, really enjoy that sort of sharp onion crown. The only thing is, <clears throat> I used to own one of these, actually, and the the sharp crown actually does dig into the wrist a little bit sometimes depending on how you're wearing it but we'll get to that in a minute so it has a 50 water 50 meter water resistance so um, i guess you could probably take this in the water but i wouldn't recommend it at all um, it has an eta 2824 standard movement uh, thermally blue hit blued hands like i mentioned and a 20 millimeter lug width um, for the straps and we'll get to this to the stock strap in a little bit. So um, As I mentioned, this is the a dial. I actually prefer the a dial to the B dial I think it's a little bit easier to read um, One of the cool things about this Munster edition though Is they essentially took the 55 millimeter? Flieger of the past in World War two and Shrunk it down into a 42 millimeter version. So what you're seeing here is almost an exact replica of how the original 55 millimeter would have looked if it was just shrunken down, just like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Um, <clears throat> so there are positives and negatives to that. Positives, I really do love this sort of almost bead blasted matte gray finish that they have to this. Um, it adds a much different feel than some of the higher, I shouldn't say higher end watches, um, or the higher end fleekers, but the sort of more refined, more refined modern fleekers like the IWC Mark 18 and the Mark 17, um, and even the Stova classic fleeker 40 millimeter. Um, so it does have a little bit more of a utilitarian feel as you would expect, since this is a direct uh, replica or homage, I guess you could also call it, to the World War II versions. 
Um, so one of the things you'll notice is right here on the side, which is pretty interesting, it reads FL23883. So all of the old uh, Fliegers of World War II had these markings on the case side. So that is a cool little nod to the history, um, as well as the layout of the inscriptions on the back. You see it's a, it's a typical snap-on case back um, with, uh, I don't even know what all this says to be honest, but it's, it's sort of accurate to how it was laid out. Markings on the case back are very similar to what you would find on the original Flieger. And of course here um, it has the name Laco and all that. And this might even be almost identical to what you would have found on the 55 millimeter um, Fliegers. So it actually wears, it's pretty thin. Um, so it definitely will fit under a cuff. I mean, the Ed A2824 is not a particularly crazy thick movement to begin with. Um, the one thing that's a little bit annoying is the actual lug. So on, for example, a, a Mark 18 or a, a Stoic Flieger Classic, you know, they have these nice tapered lugs. And this sort of just has these stubby lugs that stick out. And of course, I understand that is because <clears throat> it's true to the original and they weren't going necessarily for precision fit or nice curving lugs to go along with the wrist, but they were going for um, an identical replica to the case design. So that's something to note that if you do have a smaller wrist, um, as you guys can see there on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, um, the lugs do kind of stick out a little bit and it makes the leather stick up a little bit higher, which is, I guess it could be annoying for some people. Um, you know, it's, de it definitely doesn't fit like a modern style of Flieger with, with those curved lugs. So that's something to be mindful of as you can see how high this leather kind of sticks up off of the wrist. So uh, regarding this actual leather, so this is a used Laco, so the, the leather is actually is pretty broken in it, and I'm not going to lie, it, um, if it's an extremely comfortable strap. Um, I don't remember my strap being this comfortable, I think I bought mine new um, when I actually did purchase it, um, and this one has clearly been worn down, and it honestly fits like gloves, so I have nothing but praise for this leather. Um, it has a really nice sort of patina almost to it already and it has that kind of worn look which really really fits this um, this monster style replica um, and of course you can see they have the two two rivets that are very um, uh, it's kind of a nod to the past of the rivets of uh, the old 55 millimeter fleers as well <clears throat> so anyways um, not much to say about the dial I mean it's a pretty open dial um, it's up to you. I guess it's personal preference. Some people hate this style of watch. It's way too simple. They might want, you know, to, if there's no bezel, there's no date, it's, it's, a, it's a deal breaker. Um, but obviously this watch being the replica that it is of the Fliegers of old um, is definitely for someone who has probably a couple pieces already, <coughs> um, wants to sort of branch out really enjoys the history of the five famous Fliegers from World War II um, and wants something that's an exact replica that's not 55 millimeters. Um, I would say that if you only have one watch, maybe two or three watches even, and you're looking to get your first Flieger, um, I think a different version of the Laco or a Stova or an IWC Mark 18 might be the better option. Um, if this is going to be your daily wear, I think those might be a little bit more comfortable. Um, but <clears throat> like I said, this watch isn't for everybody. This is this is more so, I think, for the collector. Um, and maybe if you have a, a IWC Mark 18 already, you might want to pick this up since this is, <clears throat> you know, um, more of a nod to the past. All right, guys. So let me know what you think. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Fliegers. Um, I actually considered doing a Flieger collection in the past trying to get one watch from every single, um, all of the five major brands. And this Laco probably in a B dial is something that I would have pursued um, if I was going to get all five of them. Um, <clears throat> but I do love the A dial more than the B dial. I think overall, 
Uh, I think one of my favorite parts about this watch is the huge sweeping second hand. Um, it almost looks like it's moving in slow motion when you watch it because it's a little mesmerizing to see that super, super long hand sweep. Um, and I'm sure as some of you may have heard or watched some interviews, John Mayer always alludes to this as his being his, uh, his nightstand watch. You can put it on a nightstand and it will um, <clears throat> basically be a desk clock. So I'm gonna do a quick little loom shot for you guys because the loom actually is very impressive. You guys. So hopefully the camera's picking this up. Um, and I, I can assure you that in person, um, it looks much, much brighter and much more defined, um, especially these individual minute markers between um, every five minutes. Uh, the camera's really not picking up how well those shine, so. And as always, guys, join us at Properly Wound on Instagram, Properly Wound Facebook page, where we have a lot of interaction. I think we have 6,000 members. We usually have a lot of giveaways. Um, I think we've probably done at least five giveaways so far um, during the life of the Facebook group. So follow us there. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. We will still be having a lot of reviews of a lot of different kind of watches. Till next time, guys. We'll see you.